there was this beautifully crafted Toastmaster document. She was like, hold on sister, what do we do to the God of surrender? Not today. Answer these 48 questions and then we will help you find a leadership style. So I went through that document, answered all the 48 questions one after another until the last one. Still clueless. So I calculated the points I achieved for each of the leadership style and it happens that the points that I secured for each of the leadership styles were more or less the same. So I formed an opinion that you don't tag a person with one particular leadership style. It could be numerous leadership styles, but you apply them in the right place at the right time. So before I even go further discussing various leadership styles, let's talk about leadership first. Leadership. I know it's a very subjective topic. All of us, all of us have an opinion on it. I had this question in mind. Is there something called a bad leadership? Most of us are thinking, yes, they do. You might be thinking of the examples like Hitler, Stalin, or Saddam Hussein, and who not. Some of you might even be thinking of those, some of those managers that you worked with in your corporate career. Yes. But the only question I have is that were they even leaders in the first place? I know that, I don't disagree that these people are those who stood for bad or immoral behavior or treated people with, without respect or dignity that a human deserve. So were they even leaders in the first place? Or were they people who were put into position or authority or power by chance or by bribery or by, or by any means, like, or all of the means that they had? So they could be that they were simply put into those power and authority. So all of us have an opinion that most of us regard leaders that leaders are those who are in authority or power. If that is the case, Kim Jong of North Korea, he is such a successful leader then. But the so-called leaders might put their country in a worse position than what it was in the past. So leadership is not about an authority or power. It could be something about a vision. Let's take for an example, Nelson Mandela. He is a celebrated leader, even long before he became the president, and he successfully overturned apartheid. Not to forget Mahatma Gandhi. He successfully sent back the British from India without even firing a bullet. Their impact was so profound that we still regard them as the leaders, great leaders of all time. So my point is that leadership is not about authority. Firstly, leadership is about a vision and working endlessly to achieve that vision. And it's not just for yourself, it's for everybody around you, everybody around you, helping them to grow forward in their life, creating a better impact. This is what leadership is about. If a leader just works to get elected in an election or maybe to just move to the next level, then you're not a leader. A leader should have a clear vision of what to do next and what to do to create a better future and also have ethical, you know, ethical values. So it's values plus a purpose. So moving on, now that I told you about leadership, let's talk about leadership styles. I'm going to talk to you about two leadership styles because I don't have enough time. But let me tell you beforehand that there, there were like eight leadership styles mentioned in the document. All of them had their own usage and we should use them at the right time and do the right thing. It depends on the situation. For example, for a group of well-disciplined and organized people, you might use one leadership style. For a group of prisoners or criminals, you might use some other leadership style. I'm going to talk about first thing, the coaching style. In the coaching style, we help, it talks about how you lead to help the other people achieve their goals. We don't spoon feed them, okay, how, this is how you do it. We make, make a path for them to reach the goal they want. Recently, I was working as an NGO, NGO volunteer, to teach children in government schools in Karnataka. What I figured out is that we were not 
helping them, spoon feeding them that this is how you do it, this is how you learn it. We were paving a path so that they reach their full potential and achieve what they want or learn what they want. And second leadership style is altruistic style. Altruist by meaning not being selfish, thinking for the welfare of the people. So this kind of leader with this style works to, uh, works to kind of bring up the need to bring up and solve the needs of every individual in a team. Right. So when I read about this style, all I could think of was my mother. You, I'm sure all of you can relate to it. Your mother, very empathetic, and she is such an active listener. You can go and discuss any problems with her and she will listen it to the end. It doesn't matter if she provides a solution or not, but she will listen and she'll be very empathetic. So I saw that a mother kind of shows this altruistic style of leadership. So my dear friends, I just want to conclude by telling that leadership is a choice. It's not a position, it's not a power. It's what you believe in it. It's what you want to practice. And we have a lot of leadership styles. All you have to do is find the right mixture, right ratio of leadership styles, and apply them in the right situation, do the right things, and do things right. That's all I have. Thank you.